Hello students, welcome back to Need Do JN classes. In the previous lectures, we are discussing about the first piece, Animal Kingdom. In this Animal Kingdom, we completed the four phylums, and today we go for the further more phylums. And uh, right, we discussed about the Porifera, and we discussed about the Nidaria, and we discussed about the Tenophores, and we discussed about the Platyhelminthes in the last section. And in today's lectures, next go for the next phylum. The next phylum after Platyhelminthes is Ascihelminthes. The next phylum is Ascihelminthes. <coughs> yeah, listen now. Yeah, Ascihelminthes. First thing that you have to remember is the phylum Ascihelminthes is also called with a name which is known as Nematoda. Nematoda. The phylum Ascihelminthes is also called with another name which is known as Nematoda. And these organisms are also called Nemati Helminthes. Nemati Helminthes. Three names are there. The phylum having the three names. Ascii Helminthes, only in NCRT textbook they have given, only it is as Ascii Helminthes. Ascii Helminthes, the another name, they are also called them as nematodes. And they are also called them as Nemati Helminthes. Nemati Helminthes. Yeah. Fine. And these organisms are the first organisms we call them as tube within a tube organisms. Tube within a tube organism. What is the meaning of this word tube within a tube organism means? Means in these organisms, in these organism, the elementary canal is complete. First time the complete elementary canal is present here. Complete elementary canal means which contains a anterior opening mouth and this mouth is leading to the elementary canal and which contains a posterior opening which is known as the anus. So if there is a presence of two openings, anterior opening is mouth and the posterior opening is anus. If there is a presence of two openings, it is called a complete digestive system. In the introduction, we discussed about that. Up to now, from Nidaria and Tenophos and as well as Platyhelminthes, we will see the incomplete digestive tract which having the blind sac where only one opening will be present and that one opening is acting as both mouth and as well as anus. So first time, there is a presence of two openings and it is known as a complete elementary canal. The anterior opening mouth, mouth is responsible for intake of food material and posterior opening is anus which is responsible for outing of the waste material. So now you remember this is the elementary canal and these organisms, why they are called a tube within a tube organisms? For example, you take example of the pen. You take one example of the pen. The pen contains a cap. So you remember that cap as a body wall. You remember that pen cap as a body wall and inside of the pen cap we are placing the refill. We are placing the refill. See that refill is a tube like and the pen cap is also what? It is a tube. Means pen cap which is a tube and inside of this tube refill which is also appearing like a tube. So tube within a tube organism. Here the elementary canal is the example for refill and the body wall is the example for the pen cap. So pen cap is a one tube and inside of this pen cap there is a presence of one more refill, refill which is also a tube. So tube within a tube, one tube is present inside of another tube because of presence of complete elementary canal. So that is the meaning of tube within a tube organisms. These are the first tube within a tube organism. Yeah. And come to the general characters. Come to general characters that what you have known that in introduction we discussed. These are the organisms are showing which level of organization. Organ system level of organization. Yes. The first organ system level of organization is appeared here. Complete digestive tract and as well as organ system level of organization is seen from this phylum only. In Platyhelminthes, it is organ level of organization. And next, after organ system level of organization, they are exhibiting what type of symmetry? Means when you cut the animal, it is dividing into how many equal halves? Cutting into two equal halves. If it is cutting into two equal halves, means it is what symmetry? Bilateral symmetry. Bi means two. Lateral means sides. Two sides it will go. Right side and left side. This is the bilateral symmetry. And after bilateral symmetry, one more common point. What is that? One more common. Yes, how many germinal layers are present? When these animals are in the embryonic stage, they are having the three germinal layers. And you might be knowing what are three germinal layers. Outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm and inner endoderm. Those germinal layers, if three are present, it is what blastic? Triploblastic organisms. Triploblastic organisms. All this will be completed in the introduction. 
So first bilateral symmetry seen in plate helminthes. Second bilateral symmetry seen in ascii helminthes. First triploblastic plate helminthes. Second triploblastic ascii helminthes. First organ system is the ASCII helminthes. You should be keep. Comparison is very, very important. And after that, these are the coelom. Come to the coelom. Up to now, the coelom is absent. So up to Plate helminthes, all those animals are acelomates. And here coelom is appeared, but that coelom is not true coelom. And you, I said this as a coelom. What coelom? Pseudo coelom. What is the meaning of pseudo? False. Where this is the outer layer, ectoderm. And this is the inner layer, mesoderm. In between the ectoderm and endoderm, there is a presence of mesoderm germinal layer in the form of scattered pouches. In the form of scattered pouches. Means mesoderm germinal layer is not continuous and it is not even contact with the endoderm and ectoderm. So such type of such type of coelom we call it a pseudo coelom. Pseudo means false. Coelom cavity is false. So that is called pseudocelum. First pseudocelomates. This is pseudocelomates. Plate helminthes is acelomates. And after ascii helminthes, we have annelida. From annelids onwards, they are what? Coelomates. Coelomate. Comparison, please. Yeah. After pseudocelomates, next. These organisms, these organisms, as of I told, ascii helminthes. What is the meaning of helminthes I told? Helminthes means warm. Helminthes means warm. What is the meaning of ASCII? ASCII means round. So these organisms we commonly call what worms? Round worms. Why? Because their body is round. For example, it is like this the warm body will you. When you make the cross section of this animal, when I make the cross section of this animal, the body is appearing what shape? A circular shape. Means it is in round shape because of that only ASCII helminthes are commonly called round worms. Platy helminthes is commonly called flat worm. ASCII helminthes is commonly called round worm. And these organisms where they are located, what is the habitat, where they will be present. These organisms are present inside of water and aquatic Aquatic, present instead of water. Not only aquatic, these organisms are also present on land. Land living organisms, we call them as what? Terrestrial organisms. We call them as terrestrial organisms. And you remember, some of them are free living. So, for example, some of the roundworms are free living. What is the meaning of a free living? Means not causing any harm to other animals. You remember, in Nidaria, I said free swimming. And here I am telling that it is free living. What is the difference between free swimming and free living? Free swimming means which is easily movable from one place to another place. Free swimming, it can swim freely. It is free living means it is not causing any harm to other animals and it is living on itself. And some of the, some of the roundworms are parasites. Some of the roundworms are parasite what is the meaning of a parasite which is causing harm to the other organism and gaining something so such a type of roundworms are parasites which are not causing any harm and they're living their life such roundworms we call them as free living free living so you should remember roundworms some are present instead of water some are present on land some are free living not causing any harm some are parasites causing harm so they are parasites on whom and whom there are parasites on both plants they can cause harm to plants and as well as they can also cause harm to animals animals even platy is also we discussed platy is also a parasite which is a endo parasite which contain hooks and suckers and here some of the roundworms are parasites parasites on where plant they are causing harm to the plant and causing disease to the plants and causing the death of the plants and some of the roundworms are parasites in animals so many disorders are there ascaris ascaris is the disease ucararia brancrefti ucararia brancrefti it is also one disease which happens in our limbs and the leg will be swollen elephantiasis elephant leg we say so they are causing harm to animals and they are also causing harm to the plants so such type of Roundworms we call them as parasites. Some are very good, very lovely parasites. They are not causing any harm. So they are free living. Free living. Yes. This is the basic introduction that what they have given in your NCRT textbook in the first lines. 
First statement is SK element is they are commonly called round worms. Why? Because when you make the sectional cutting, they are appearing circular. And these are tube within a tube organisms with organ system level of ordination, bilateral symmetry, triploblastic and pseudocelomates. And these organisms are some are aquatic, some are terrestrial. Some are free living, some are parasites. Parasites in both plants and as well as in a animals this is the statement they have given and i told that the elementary canal is complete with an anterior opening mouth and posterior opening anus with a well developed muscular pharynx with a well developed muscular pharynx the pharynx is appeared here so that pharynx is made up of a muscle because of that only that pharynx we call it as muscular pharynx muscular pharynx well developed muscular pharynx so elementary canal is complete with a well developed muscular pharynx pharynx is made up of a muscle and you remember in these organisms in these organisms as of i told that like pseudocelomates right you just remember a worm of round worm like this like this you just imagine this is the round worm it is the round worm posterior opening anus and this is the anterior opening mouth and this organism having the complete elementary canal with the anterior opening of mouth and the posterior opening is anus this is the posterior opening is anus complete elementary canal now you remember this is the cavity what cavity this is body cavity and which type of body cavity a coelom pseudo coelom or coelom as of i told pseudo coelom so this is the pseudo coelom inside of this pseudo coelom if any waste material is present if any waste material is present body waste is excreted by a glands the body waste is excreted by a glands those glands we call them as renete glands r e n e t t e renete glands it is not given in your ncert textbook but just i am telling that renete glands are the excretory glands eliminating the waste material and maintaining the body fluid balance and osmoregulation so the renete glands are helping in both excretion one minute The renete glands are helping in both excretion, not only in excretion, and they are also helping in osmoregulation through the tubes, through the tubes or through the pores. What are those tubes? Those tubes are helping in excretion. So those tubes we call them as excretory tube. And through this pore, what is the meaning of pore holes? Through these pores, through these pores, the waste material is eliminating. So this pore is called excretory pore excretory pore let me give some clarity here yes you remember blue is renate gland the renate gland having the one tube this tube is called excretory tube and this excretory tube is opening out through the pore what pore excretory pore which helping in excretion of waste material and as well as maintaining the body fluid balance means osmoregulation osmoregulation and these organisms first organisms that sexes are separate sexes are separate like human beings like animals sexes are separate means they are not monoecious they are dioecious female roundworm is different and male roundworm is different and both looks different so there there is a variation is there male roundworm is appearing like something and female roundworm is appearing like something how can we identify whether it is a male roundworm or whether it is a female roundworm means you remember sexes are separate means dioecious these organisms are dioecious first time we are studying about the dioecious poriferans monoecious nidarians monoecious tenophore monoecians platyhelminthes monoecian and these are dioecious organisms sexes are separate sexes are separate means how can we identify male and female for example this is the male and this is the female round worm female round worm it is male round worm and it is female round worm you observe carefully who looks large the female is larger than the male and the female having the straight posterior end and male having the curved posterior end if the round worm is curved posterior having curved posterior end and it is short means it is male if it is large and the posterior end is straight means it is female so simple logic is females are larger 
or are longer than males why they are larger means their posterior end is straight and why they are small means their posterior end is curved like so because of that only this in this manner we can easily identify which one is male and which one is female so sexes are dioecious male and female and go for the fertilization the fertilization is obviously internal fertilization gametes are fusing inside they both will participate and the male roundworm will release these sperms inside of the female and the fusion is happening inside of female body so because of that only the fertilization is internal fertilization and they will lay the eggs or sometimes uh, ovvv parents we call them as and the larva stage some having the larva stage some not having the larva stage if larva stage is present they are showing what development indirect development if larva stage is absent means what type of development direct development both we will see fertilization is internal and some worm having the larva stage those who having the larva stage they are showing the indirect development and those not having the larva stage they are showing the direct development this is about the phylum aske helminthes what they have given see it's very easy nothing is there don't be complicated don't get a confusion while you reading don't get confusion very very easy Yes, find three examples they have given. The three examples: Ascaris roundworm. We discussed about that roundworm only. Ascaris roundworm. Next one: Uchar area branchiae. Uchar area branchiae. Filarial worm, which causes the disease of filariasis. Later we will discuss all that. And next one is uh, hookworm. Encyclostoma. Encyclo. All are worm, 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 worm. Filarial worm, uh, roundworm, uh, hookworm, pinworm. So many are there. the three examples you remember that is about the phylum aske helminthes and after aske helminthes the next phylum the next phylum is anelida the next phylum is anelida anelida as of i told each and every word meaning name yes i tell that anelida lida means what ring lida means what ring yes lida means ring ani means what little ani means what little means their body having the number of small small rings little rings are present one example for anelid is what earthworm one example for anelida is earthworm yes why they are appearing in a little little ring why because their body is metamerically segmented that one segment is appearing like a ring that one segment is appearing like a ring so that uh, the body is divided into number of segments the body is divided into number of segments it's showing the number of segments are there and the showing these segments the segments are also called metamers metamers metamer segment both are same both are same metamer or segment the process of the phenomenon of showing of metamers is called metamerism in introduction you will get this what is metamerism means where the body is having the number of metamers metamers means nothing but segment that each segment is appearing like a small ring each segment is appearing like a small ring for example annelids what is the habitat of this annelid annelids are annelids are present inside of water means aquatic and they are also present on land means a terrestrial same like uh, aske helminthes some of the annelids are living what living free living for example earthworm is free living and some of the annelids are parasites parasite for example leech leech you can take in water it will be present it will present on our skin and it will suck the blood leech is a parasite why because it is gaining what it is gaining blood it is gaining so how that i explained here same annelids aquatic and they are also present in uh, terrestrial aquatic means both marine and as well as fresh water marine water and fresh water some of the annelids are free living and some of the annelids are parasites sometimes they are parasites the body of these annelids is divided into number of segments and the process of showing of segments is called what metamerism process of showing of segmentation is called metamerism what is another name for segments is metamers the process of showing of metamers is called metamerism yeah next come to the common points that what you have known what you have known yes these organisms are showing which level of organization yes 
they are showing the organ system level of organization without any doubt from ASCII helmet this to up to chordates all are showing the organ system level of organization and what type of symmetry yes bilateral symmetry where the organism can cut into two equal halves two equal halves bilateral symmetry and these organisms during embryonic stage how many germinal layers are present three germinal layers are present yes presence of three germinal layers that indicates what triploblastic nature triploblastic organisms triploblastic ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm and these organisms having the which type of body cavity coelom these are the first coelomates a true coelom the first true coelom is present in which phylum Anilida. Aske helminthes is pseudocelomates, false coelom. Here it is indicating that this is the embryonic germinal layer ectoderm and this is followed by the here endoderm is present and in between these two there is a presence of mesoderm germinal layer which is in contact lined with the ectoderm and it also lined with the endoderm like this it is present means this if it is present like this now this is the empty space all this empty space is called as coelom true coelom if it is present like this it is a false coelom pseudo coelom the first coelomates are annelids first coelomates are annelids this is about the introduction part in your textbook first first six seven lines all this next annelids one example earthworm one example is earthworm the body this annelids contains two types of muscles the annelids contain two types of muscles. What are the two types of muscles? The two types of muscles, number one is circular muscle, the muscle that is circular shape, and number two is longitudinal muscle. Longitudinal muscle. It having the two types of muscles, circular muscle and longitudinal muscle. What is the use of these muscles? The body wall contains these muscles, and the use of these muscles is they are helping in locomotion. They are helping in locomotion. What is the meaning of locomotion? Moving from one place to another place. Motion means what? Moving. Loco means what? Location. Moving from one location to another location is called locomotion. Because of that only see, because of presence of these two types of muscle, because of circular muscle, earthworm body get a contract and because of longitudinal muscle, earthworm body get relaxed. Contracting, relaxing. Contracting, relaxing. And it is moving from one place to another place by contracting and relaxing. So such type moving from one place to another place. So it is locomotion. For example, how we are moving from one place to another place legs. So for us legs are the locomotory structures. Arthwam how it is moving. It is moving because of muscles. How many types of muscles? Two types. Circular muscle, longitudinal muscle which helps in locomotion moving from one place to another place. Yes. So Arthwam is okay fine. If you go for the aquatic annelid. One aquatic annelid is there. See here I, I represent no? aquatic. One aquatic annelid is there. Marine living. That aquatic annelid name is Neris. How earthworm is the example for annelida? Same like that only Neris is also one example for annelida. This where it is present aquatic annelid. Which water? Marine water. Which water it is means? Marine water. It will be present in the marine water. Yes, this aquatic annelid. How it is showing the locomotion? For example, this is the aquatic annelid. Just imagine this is the aquatic annelid like this having the segments yeah only do unique characteristic feature is what showing the segmentation showing the segmentation having little little rings and you remember this is the dorsal surface means like this the uh, nearest is present this is the back surface this is the front surface then what it is side lateral surface so this is the lateral surface and this is back surface front it is ventral surface now you remember in the lateral side there is a presence of appendages paired appendages appendages means nothing but legs appendages means nothing but legs see the legs are present lateral side or ventral side or dorsal side lateral side they are present side there so these appendages we call them as lateral appendages lateral appendages in this manner one more pair of lateral lateral appendage lateral appendage lateral appendage lateral appendage lateral appendages lateral appendages lateral appendages lateral appendages all these are the lateral appendages and all these lateral appendages we call them as all these lateral appendages we call them as parapodia 
parapodia. One is one pair is lateral appendages. All, all the lateral appendages we call them as parapodia. And in parapodia, these parapodias are only seen for nearest. And nearest is present instead of water. In water, how they can move from one place to another place? If you jump into the water, you want to move from one place to another place. How you will move? Walking? Huh? No. Running? Huh? No. How? Swimming. Swimming. So, the lateral appendages which are present in nearest, we call them as parapodia. And they are responsible for swimming type of locomotion. Yes. This you have to remember, parapodia, nothing but lateral appendages, the print, they're helping in water. Locomotion is swimming, swimming. And it is only seen in the aquatic canalid. What is the aquatic canalid? Nearest, which aquatic? Marine water. Marine water. And come to the excretory structure. Excretory structure, you should remember the excretory structures. In platyhelminthes, I told excretory structure is flame cells. The another name for flame cell is protonephridia. And another name is solanocytes. And in ASCII helminthes, the excretory structure is ranite glands. Ranite glands, oh, which are having the excretory tube. Excretory tubes are opening out through the excretory pores. Now come to the excretory structure in the annelids. The excretory structure in annelid is nephridia. Nephridia. The nephridia is the excretory structure and maintaining in the balancing of water, so osmoregulation. So how the diagram of the nephridia it will be, which having the funnel shaped part and which is a tubular part and which having the pore, nephridio pore. This is the structure, we call it as nephridia. There is a presence of three types of nephridias are there in earthworm, in structural organization in animals, in earthworm we will discuss septal nephridia, integumentary nephridia and pharyngeal nephridia. Those later we can discuss. This is the structure of the nephridia. nephridia. And the nephridia performs how many functions? Two functions. Number one, it helps in excretion and not only excretion, maintaining a body balance and a osmoregulation. Osmoregulation. Yes. Next. Next. Come to the nervous system. Come to the nervous system. If you go for the nervous system, let me draw the small diagram of earthworm here. So this is the earthworm body. Earthworm body. Like this it is having the number of segments. Segments are also called metamers. Like this it is a present. Anterior opening mouth and here we are having the posterior opening anus. Anterior opening mouth, posterior opening is anus. Which is having the number of segments. All these are the segments. Segments are also called metamers. Segments are also called metamers. Yeah. Now we remember, if you divide the annelid into like this, divide into two parts, divided into two parts like this, means annelid is like this it is fallen down how we will sleep our mouth is facing downwards and our this part is facing upwards like this it is present so it is what surface ventral surface and it is what surface dorsal surface front is ventral back is dorsal if you are laying down means front is in contact with the surface now same like that only earthworm is laying downwards why because it will it will always lay down and it will move like this means that is telling that it is the ventral surface and it is the dorsal surface yes now in the ventral surface, in the ventral surface, it contains a ganglion, nervous system I am telling. It contains a ganglion. Yes, in this manner there is a presence of ganglion. I will tell what is the meaning of ganglion. Yes, how many ganglions? Pair. Whatever it may be, they are pair. Six I represent. Six is a pair number. Six is a pair number. These are the ganglions. And there is a presence of nerve cord. Presence of nerve cord. This is the nerve cord number one, and this is the nerve cord number two. So, how many nerve cords are present? Two nerve cords are present, and paired ganglia, na, unpaired ganglia, paired ganglia, and these two nerve cords are attached to the ganglion by lateral nerves, by lateral nerves, ladder shaped nervous system, ladder shaped nervous system. So, neural system consists of a paired ganglion. And a pair of nerve cords. Nerve cords are present. Nerve cords. And those two nerve cords are attached to the ganglion by lateral nerves. Let me represent. Take it outside. So this is the nerve cords. Two nerve cords. And here there is a presence of ganglions. Which are paired in number. Like this. Paired in number. And these two ganglions are attached by 
to the lateral nerves by attached to the nerve cord by lateral nerves lateral nerves it is nerve cord it is ganglion it is lateral nerve you remember so this is the ladder shape see ladder will be like this only na? nervous system is in the form of ladder shape in the we can say aske helminth sorry anilida so now you remember where this all the nervous system is present the nervous system is present in the dorsal surface or in the ventral surface yes the nervous system is present in the ventral surface for non chordates for non chordates the nervous system is present in the ventral surface for us nervous system is present in the dorsal surface dorsal surface the statement is telling that nervous system is located ventral side ventral and having how many nerve cords two nerve cords so it is a double double nerve cords ventrally located and how many nerve cords are present double and the nerve cords are solid shape they are not hollow they are solid there is no gap there is no gap in that so this is the very very important where for a non chordate nervous system is located in the ventral side for chordates nervous system is located dorsal side spinal cord means backbone having the spinal cord it is a dorsal ventral dorsal it is single or double single but in case of here it is a nerve cord is double or single double and it is located ventral or dorsal ventral and it is solid for us hollow for us is hollow you remember this i will give the clarity in this all i will give the clarity now come to the sexus come to this excess three examples they have given three examples they have given the three examples are number one is nearis number two is artwam and number four is leech leech in these three in these three artwam and leech are monoecious monoecious means sexes are not separate for example this is the artwa moli na artwa moli na just remember here there is a presence of male reproductive parts what are the male reproductive parts testis and here there is a presence of female reproductive part what is the female reproductive part ovary so both the sexes are not separate both are present in the same individual monoecious means sexes are not separate in artwa and as well as in leech but aquatic nearis this is dioecious means which indicates sexes are separate we can identify what is male nearis and what is female nearis so only nearis is dioecious both earthworm and leech is monoecious where sexes are not separate this they have given about the anilida examples peritema the common name for peritema is earthworm it is our indian earthworm the artworm that what you are seeing in our country all their peritemas peritemas and next one they have given nearis a marine which is a dioecious which is dioecious and last one is leech hyrudinaria hyrudinaria leech you remember this the unique characteristic feature of the anilids is presence of segments segmentation segments is also called metamers the artworm contains how many number of segments artworm contains 100 to 120 segments minimum 100 maximum 120 leech contains how many number of segments a fixed number of segments we will see in the leech how many number means 33 the leech having how many rings 33 rings artworm have how many rings minimum 100 maximum 120 these are the two phylums that i discussed uh, uh, about ascohelminthes and as well as anilid i hope you understood if you understood like subscribe and share to your friends and as well as don't forget to give the comments and within a span today um, today itself i will upload further more phylums and i will complete the non chordates non chordates and thank you thank you all of you hope you enjoyed the class don't forget to subscribe thank you all of you. bye